Welcome, my name is Leah Wilson Fellis. I'll be recording this via Zoom and for YouTube. So it is a live class as well as a recorded class. And so make sure you have any kind of props around you that you might need, like a yoga block. Um, I'm sitting on a, on a pillow, maybe a yoga blanket will come in handy for you. And so we're going to get started in any seated position. So it could look like this, or you could extend a leg out if you have a leg that's bothering you. Both legs out, or you could even do like a pinwheel type pose. So figure out what in your body is going to work best for you. Now if you're sitting and your legs are really tight and your knees are not opening very well, then it might be a really good idea to sit up on a block or up on elevated pillows. So sometimes just sitting up on a block raises up your hips and then the legs can kind of just drape down below the block. So try that and try different things, see what works for you and find your space to do some yoga today. We're going to do a full body flow today. We're going to start with some easy stretches and then move into some Sun A and Sun B. So I'm going to do a mudra today for the heart chakra. And this is it. You're just taking one hand over your heart and then the other. And you're overlapping your fingers with your fingers wide. Kind of like you're holding on to that heart space. Maybe closing your eyes or just lowering the gaze down. And let's just take a couple breaths, my friends, and start to bring ourselves to this moment while we're just here on our yoga mat, just beginning the practice today. Breathing in, nice, lacy, deep breaths through your nose, and lacy, deep breaths out through your nose, in through the nostrils, and out through your nostrils. <clears throat> Clearing in the airways, breathing deep. And as we begin our practice today with your hands just over your heart, holding on to that space, start to really feel in truly how, how it is that you're feeling inside today. If there's any kind of, you know, emotion inside of you there's any kind of physical feeling inside inside your your body anywhere in your body just noticing bringing awareness to all of the sensations that you feel right now thinking of perhaps an intention, a dedication, maybe a prayer that comes in handy today to help lift the spirit, help support your practice today. So maybe that comes in the form of an actual prayer. Maybe that, that sankalpa or that intention comes in the form of one simple word. Or maybe it's a wish. Maybe you wish or you long for something in your life. What do you long for? Breathing that in, whatever that intention, that desire, that goal, whatever that is, just pulling it into you right now. One more deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Let's release our hands down. You can kind of feel a warm spot on the chest. Let's just start to roll the shoulders. Shrug those shoulders up to your ears, squeeze them back to your spine, drop the shoulders down, and we'll do that just a couple times so that you're rolling the shoulders. If you're like me, you can feel those shoulder blades roll over top knots and ribs. And then go the other way too so that you're going forwards, shrugging the shoulders up, rolling them forward and back a couple times.
Now if you're up on a block, you can stay up there. If, if you don't need that block, you can get it out of your way and put it aside if you need it later. And We'll ground our fingers. If the legs are uncomfortable, change them so that they're more comfortable. We'll drop our right hand down. We're just going to reach that left hand up and stretch out the left side body. So if you need more than, you know, just a simple reaching up to the sky, then you can bend into your right elbow and start to reach a little further. Now you never want your left sit bone to leave the floor. So if it's peeled up, start to press it back down and find that correct posture. Take a breath when you're there. Inhale and bring yourself back up and let's explore the other side. So if you need to change something, do it. And we'll start to reach over towards the left so that the right side is reaching. So again, if you need more stretch, the left elbow can bend. But you never want your right leg to lift. You want it to stay grounded as well as you can. One more breath here, deep breath. We'll inhale and bring ourselves back up to center. Now we'll add that in again later. Let's move into the neck. So keep your shoulders low. We're going to start to reach our hands back behind us. So if from a side version, you can a vision, you can see uh, my hands interlacing back behind me and pulling my hands back. So I'll face you again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to reach my hands to the left, lean my body to the right, and I'm going to just rock side to side. Hands are to the right, hands are to the left. Now this time we're going to bend the left elbow and bring the hands into the right waist. So my hands are still interlaced, but they're in the right side of my waist. And I'm going to lean my head also towards the right. You can start to feel your neck stretching on the left side. Relax the shoulder down. Lift the chin up. Drop the chin down. And just explore the left side of the neck with your head leaning to the right. Don't forget to breathe. And if your mind begins to leave this practice, come back to your intention your sankalpa, your goal. We're going to release everything. Release the hands. Drop the hands down. We'll do a side sway to each side. So left hand drops down. We just stretched all of that out. Right hand does the reaching. We'll start to bend into the left side body to stretch the right side out so that that left side can have a break. We're going for it next. One more breath. Inhale and reach deeper. Exhale, relax. Inhale, bring yourself back up to center. Let's do that side sway to the right. Left hand is doing the reaching this time. Extending through those ribs. Deep breaths, maintaining the stretch while you breathe. And then with an inhale, bring yourself back up. Nice. Let's bring our arms out, interlace those fingers again behind your low back. Maybe this time you do it the kind of awkward way, where before my left finger, my pinky finger was underneath and now my right one is, but behind my back, so it's a little awkward. We'll bring our hands into our left waist. So see how my left elbow is pulled out to the side here. And then we're going to lean our head also towards the left. You can really feel that right side of the neck stretching down all the way into the top of the shoulder. And we'll start to just carve out that left side. So you're leaning to the left, stretching out the right side of the neck. And if you find a really good spot where it feels really good, you can hang out there as long as you need to. Let's spend at least one more breath stretching here. release when you're ready. Bring your head back up. Drop your chin to your chest. Roll your head to the left and drop your chin to your chest. Roll your head to the right. Drop your chin to chest. 
back and forth one more time. And we'll come on back up to center here. Nice work, everybody. Let's start to work into our waist. So, um, I, I don't want to overdo our knees and hips here, so I'm going to turn to the side and extend my legs straight out. So if your mat is vertical and, you'll, and you're facing the camera, you can do that. So you just want to be legs out on that mat. Now our waist, so that has to do with rounding the back and curving in that low back. It has to do with lifting up tall, using your core. So let's try reaching our hands back behind us. Squeeze those shoulder blades back, look up, lift your chin. This is a very nice, just easy variation of the postures that we'll be going into. So if this feels good, make sure to just continuously come back to this pose. You don't have to add anything extreme on. With your next inhale, let's pick ourselves up to seated all the way up to the sky, kind of like you're reaching up for the ceiling, reaching up for the sky. And we're going to start to reach forward for your knees, shins, ankles, or your toes, wherever you are. Wherever you are in that stretch is good. And start to round over and draw your chin to your chest. And let's breathe. So if you're holding your breath, make sure to start moving the breath like a rhythm. Breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose. You're welcome to breathe out through your mouth as well, especially if you can't breathe. If you're outside, you know, it's starting to clear up. That smoke is starting to smell a little better. Now let's roll back up, back up to your knees. From that space, sweep your hands up to the sky, drop your hands down slightly behind you. Now you're welcome to hang out right here in this beautiful beginning posture, just hanging out. If you'd like to go into the intermediate with me, you'll measure it out by bringing your foot flat, one foot flat. The heel lines up with my knee, and then I'm going to line up the other foot with that one reverse tabletop. We lift our hips up off the ground. We start to draw our knees forward. Squeeze the glutes to open the chest and look up. Let your head draw back a little bit. We're going to hang out for just a breath. Start to drop the hips back down. Lengthen the legs. We're going to do another forward fold. Thinking about your core. Sweep your hands up to the sky. Length and start to round over, reaching for knees, shins, ankles, toes, wherever you are. Feeling your hamstrings stretching, your lower back, your mid-back stretching. Really, you're going to feel that wherever you need it the most. So, it's wherever you're holding tension right now. Let's take one last big breath here. Great job. Slide your hands up to your knees. Sweep your hands out past your toes up to the sky. Big breath in. Exhale. Hands come down behind you. Land on your hands. Fingers point out. Out to the side. Or for advanced practitioners, they point in. In towards your hips. Now, remember, beginner. Just opening the chest, letting your head draw back. Intermediate is the, the reverse tabletop posture. And if you're wanting to try the more advanced posture today, you might try it. If it starts hurting your wrists, you know that they're just not strong enough quite yet. So you might just start to straight legs, lift up onto your heels, point your toes down, squeeze through your butt. And again, remember, if it's hurting your wrists, it's not, it's not honoring your body. So make sure to release if there's any kind of pain. We've got lots of options. Let's sweep our hands up to the sky. Roll your wrists at the top like you're swirling some, some like a big pot of stew on the ceiling <laughs> with your fingers. And we'll start to reach forward for your feet or ankles, shins or knees, just rounding over. You can use a strap if you have one available too. And we'll start to rock a little to the right and rock a little to the left so that your legs are rotating, the toes the knees are rotating to the right, to the left. 
I'm going to look down at my knees or back at my belly if I can. And we'll start to roll back up. Great job, everybody. Let's do a couple little hip openers here. So we're going to be doing core and hips. So let's keep our right leg straight. Our left knee is going to bend out to the side. You can support that knee with a pillow, with a blanket rolled up if you need to. So if you need a little cushion there. So we're going to stretch the hamstring and we're going to try to make that come from this place in our core. So sweep those hands up like you're reaching up really high for something. And then we'll reach forward for our right foot. So I'm going to turn back around this direction. Both hands reaching for the foot. You don't want to just be reaching with your right hand. That's a different posture. It is a pose, but we'll go there next. So make sure both hands are reaching equally. You can bow your head down towards your knee, and that's going to increase the posture. Let's take a big breath. Now we will go into that one-sided reach where you're reaching more with your right hand. And your left hand can start to reach out to the side, up to the sky. And if you want to, it could even fan over your head towards your right toes. Nice work, everybody. Now the more that you can open your chest and look up at the ceiling, the more stretch you're going to feel through that left side of your chest and belly right through the waist, right through the hip, and we'll bring ourselves back up to center, sliding back up. So I want to make some space on my yoga mat here so that my left shin is on the mat. So I'm going to scoot back a little bit on my mat so that my right leg is nice and straight along the back side of my mat. Now my left shin is on the mat. Now if you know that your knee is a little bit bony, you could use your pillow or your blanket underneath your knee. We're going to be going into a kind of like a, a wild thing, a baby wild thing. So we're going to sweep our left hand back and line it up with our hip. We're going to roll up onto our left shin, turning your right toes forward. So as we turn our right toes forward, we hoist ourselves up onto our palm and our left shin and reach the right hand over. Yeah, it's called baby wild thing. So let's take a big long reach with that right hand and we'll reach our hip back down to the floor. Our right toes flip up. Let's try that again. Reach down your right leg, right hand. Left hand sweeps up all the way up and over towards the right foot. Inhale, fan yourself back up to center. Drop onto that left hand, left shin, hoisting yourself up into the baby wild thing. Now it's okay if you're not quite able to get up on your shin or on your hand. Just take note of that, something to work on. Let's drop ourselves back down. Release everything here. Kick out your left leg, wiggle it out a little bit, so wiggle out your knees. Do some window wipers with your feet. Let's do the other side so that you know we don't get um, we don't get out of balance. So we're gonna kick our left leg out straight here and bend our right knee. So I'll show you facing the camera. Left leg straight, right knee bent. Always feel free to support that right knee if you need to. All right, big inhale up to the sky like you're reaching up for something ahead overhead of you. And then we're going to fold equally to your left foot or your left ankle. See how my back is rounding a little bit? I'm really feeling that stretch in my mid-back. I also feel it in my left hamstring a lot. To feel it more, you can just bow your head. Alright, and from here we're going to add that side reach. Left hand reaches down the left leg. Right hand sweeps out towards the back wall. Open your chest. Right hand can sweep up to the sky. Over your head towards your left foot. Feel that stretch all the way from your right hip, right waist, right ribs, right armpit, right elbow, even through your hand and fingers maybe. 
big breath. And we'll sweep ourselves back up to center. Let's set up for baby wild thing. So let's scooch ourselves back a little bit, make some room. If you need a little cushion for your right knee, get it in place. Now, right hand is going to ground. We're going to hoist ourselves onto our right shin and knee. That means our left toes have to roll forward so that we create a little platform with our inner foot. So let's try it. Let's all at the same time hand, right knee, left foot, and the left hand can reach over our head. Nice. So I feel that through the whole left side body. Big breath. Drop it down. Let's try that again. Left hand down the left leg. Right hand sweeps up overhead towards the left foot, maybe. Look up under your armpit. Relax. Inhale. Bring yourself up to center when you're ready. And we'll try that baby wild thing. A nice swing with that left hand up over your head, hoisting yourself up into that posture. Really exalt the heart there and feel the chest opening. And when you've had enough, release down, coming back to center. All right, moving deeper into the hips. We're gonna bring our left foot to meet our right. Feet come together in the middle. You can start to feel the inner thighs stretching there a little bit. Grab onto your feet. Hands could be on the mat, right in front, in that nice little curve that your ankles make. Maybe you could grab onto your ankles, and we'll start to bend our elbows. I'm pretty tight today, so all I need is a little bend. Some people can really press their elbows into their inner thighs. We'll start to round over here. Maybe you like to keep your back straight. Explore both of those options. Now if your inner thighs are just screaming at you, then a good option is to rock to the right, to the left. That way your nervous system doesn't get overloaded with sensation. Great job everybody. Right, let's come on back up to seated. Bring those knees together, relieve those inner thighs where you're feeling that stretch really deeply before. Maybe you cross your ankles and pull your feet in a little closer and give your legs a little hug. Try to sit up tall. So if you felt like your spine was kind of rounding over there, try to again drop shoulders, lift through your heart, through your throat, through your crown, all of those upper energy centers reaching up and we'll release the knees release the arms and we are going to come to hands and knees next so if you have some water your smoothie coffee close by then you can grab a sip um, and then we're going to use maybe a blanket maybe a pillow maybe you have an extra yoga mat hanging out for some cushion on under your knees so it's your choice, you don't have to use anything. I just have knobby knees, so I like to have a little cushion there. So fingers spread. You really want your fingers to be spread on the yoga mat. And we want all of our pressure to be going through the bottom sides of your knuckles. So if you can imagine like grabbing onto monkey bars, you want that spot where you're grabbing on to be pressing into the mat. So a lot of people put a lot of pressure through the heel of their hand, and we really want to spread it through the fingers. It takes practice and time, so don't worry. Now let's start with a nice straight back. So a lot of times we have a curved back, and we, so let's try to make it straight. Point your crown straight ahead. Point your tailbone straight back. Now let's just arc through our shoulders. So look back at your at your shins, or I'm sorry, at your thighs, <laughs> and then look forward and drop your shoulders back. And let's add the whole spine into that, the waist, the hips, tuck your tailbone, squeeze the butt, arc up through the spine, push into the floor, and then take a big inhale, lift your tailbone, lift your head, drop your belly. 
Good, like a horseshoe, rounding the back, dropping the head and the tailbone. Horseshoeing the other way, lift head, lift tailbone, drop your belly. Back and forth a couple times. I'll let you move at your own pace here. Nice work, everybody. Come on back to tabletop pose. So from tabletop, we're going to walk our hands forward about one handprint. And we're going to take our hands off the mat towards the left. So my hands are off the mat on the deck, on the wood, on the floor. And then I'm going to take my right hip. I'll show you here, my right hip here. And I'm going to pretend like someone is pulling it back. So I'm leaning my hips to the right, but my hands are off to the left. And you might lean that right armpit into the floor. So leaning your right armpit down, leaning your right hip back to the right, reaching to the left. Now remember, you can hold these as long as you like. If this is becoming too much for you, then that's just your body saying it's time to release and do the other side. So when you want to, pick yourself back up to your hands, walk your hands back on your mat, off to the right. Lean back through your left hip. So I pretend like someone has attached a rope to my left hip and they're pulling me back towards this back left corner of the mat. Now I'm going to start to lean into my left elbow and my left armpit. And breathe. Let's start to come on up to tabletop and walk the hands back to center. Fingers spread. Remember to try to push down through the underside of your knuckles. Tuck your toes. Roll up into your downward facing dog and while you're here make sure that your feet are separated. Pedal the heels out here. So press your left heel down, press your right heel down, back and forth a couple times. Look back at your ankles, maybe shake your head out a little bit if your neck is bothering you at all, if there's still any tension there, just trying to bring movement. And then we're going to look towards our hands and walk forward a little bit. Walk your hands back to your feet. You're ending up in a forward fold. Nice work everybody. Let's lift up about halfway. So my fingertips stay on the floor or your hands can lift up to your shins, whichever you prefer. You want to straight back here and you don't want your ears way up by your chin or your shoulders there. <laughs> I'm sorry, your shoulders by your ears. <laughs> you want your shoulders to drop down so that your neck is lengthening. Nice work. One more breath, just holding that half forward fold. And we'll release into a full forward fold, bending your knees, letting your body just drape over your legs. Shake your head no, very slowly. Shake your head yes, once or twice. Start to get your bearings by looking down at your toes. Sweep your arms out like a bird, press through your feet, and start to roll all the way up. I'll scoop my mat back just a little bit here so that my head isn't cut out. Alright, so we're coming all the way up to standing. And our hands will come to our heart center. All right, so we're going to be doing sun salutation here. So we'll go through really slow the first time, and then we'll speed it up two more times. Inhale here. Exhale, hands to your sides. As you inhale, sweep those hands up again. And exhale to swan dive to a forward fold. Bend your knees a lot. 
drape your belly forward over your legs. As you inhale, straighten your right leg and feel that stretching behind your knee. And then release and bend both legs. And let's try it on the left too and just see, just see how it feels if, if the left side's tighter than the right. Don't worry about breathing or matching your breathing quite yet, just kind of feeling the stretch here. We can start to add that breathing when you're ready though. So what that looks like is as you inhale you'll straighten one leg and feel the stretch go up the back of the knee back of the thigh exhale bend your knees and then try the other side with your next inhale left leg could be your right leg <laughs> exhale and bend both inhale straighten the right leg exhale release and bend both inhale left leg exhale bend both as you inhale, lift halfway to fingertips on the mat or palms on your shins. Shoulders down, away from the ears. Neck is lengthening. Let's take one more breath. Exhale, bend through your knees so much that your hands can come down to your mat and we'll step our feet back to downward facing dog. And let's pedal those heels out once or twice on each side. Now let's get this roll through movement down. So as you come to center downward dog, let's roll up to our tippy toes. So let's just do that two, two or three times, just rolling up to our tippy toes and pressing the heels down. Roll up to your tippy toes and continue that through your body so the momentum is pushing through your head so you come into plank. And you can lower through your knees before lowering onto your belly. So it's not always pretty, it's not always graceful. Just get down on the, on the belly. Scoop the elbows back. You can look forward. If you wanna go higher, press your feet down and start to press into your mat to peel the heart up. We'll lower back through. Retuck your toes. You can press up to hands and knees first, or you can press up to plank. Hinge at your hips. Downward dog. Make any adjustments. Look towards your hands and start to tippy toe your feet forward. Walk your hands back, whatever you need to, to get into that forward fold. Again, it's not always pretty. It's not always graceful. We just get, get to where we're going. Inhale and lift halfway. Exhale and forward fold. Let your arms go. Let your head go. Let your knees be soft. Sweep the arms out. Be a bird for just a moment. Let the air catch your arms, your wings. And we'll start to reach up to the sky, lifting all the way. Exhale, hands to your heart center. Great job, everybody. Let's speed that up a little bit. Inhale here at your heart. Remember your intention. Remember your sankalpa. Let's take one more breath here, breathing in. As you breathe out, bring your hands to the sides of your body. Inhale, sweep those hands up and around as high as they go. Exhale, soften, bend through your knees and forward fold. We're going to just do one of these. So soft knees, both knees are bent. Inhale and straighten one leg. Exhale, bend both knees, so re-bend. And with your next inhale, do it on the other side. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Walk your hands forward. Step your feet back, downward dog. Let's practice that roll forward movement again. So roll up to your tippy toes, roll forward into plank. Let's try it again. So lift those hips back up, downward dog. Roll up to your tippy toes. Let that follow through into your hips and shoulders above your hands. Plank. Let's try it one more time. Hike your hips back. 
Roll up to your toes. Let that follow through over top your hands. And we'll lower down to the belly. You can drop onto hands and knees. You can come all the way down if you want to. And then we'll find that heart lift. It could be Sphinx, a little Cobra, or if you're ready for it, an Up Dog. Releasing back down. Be kind to your spine. Tuck your toes. Let's find our way back up. I always come to hands and knees first and then roll up. Nice work. Pedal it out once or twice here in your downward dog. Gain that strength in your hands and in your shoulders. Look forward to your hands and start to walk forward. Walk your hands back, whatever you need to get into a forward fold. Relax there. Let your head go. Let your arms go. With an inhale, lift halfway. Flat back, hands on the shins. Exhale, relax, knees bend. Sweep your arms out, reverse swan dive, slowly carrying yourself up to standing. Exhale, heart center. Here is our third sun salutation from our second downward dog. We'll add on sun salutation B. So if you don't know what I mean, then it's just my variation of a sun B. So inhale here, hands at the heart. Exhale, Tadasana, hands by your side. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, reach up for the sun. Exhale, forward fold. Soften your knees, reach for your toes, reach for your shins, wherever you are in that forward fold. Inhale and lift halfway, flatten your back. Exhale, bend your knees back into a forward fold. Hands come down to the mat, you might have to walk them forward. Step your feet back, downward dog. It's our first downward dog, so we'll continue our vinyasa. Inhaling, rolling forward into plank. Exhaling, lowering down to the mat. Inhale, heart lift. Exhale, forward fold. Back to the mat. Folding into the mat. Tuck the toes. Roll back up. Downward dog. This is our second downward dog. Reach your right leg up to the sky. Bend your right knee a little bit. Might feel that stretch in the quad on top of your thigh. Lengthen your leg back up, reaching it for the ceiling. And step your right foot forward as best as you can, as far forward as you can. Left toes can stay grounded. You could roll your foot out flat to a 45 degree, so that's up to you. It could be heel up or heel down. Your choice. Let's find our way to standing. Right foot forward, left foot back. Glasses are a little smudgy there. <laughs> we'll sweep our hands either out to the side. If your balance feels a little off, maybe you stay on your knee today. Maybe you want to reach up for the sky and really reach and stretch your body today. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, soften your right knee a little bit deeper. Ooh, it's getting a little harder now, a little bit more difficult. Let's do that one more time. This is a version of Warrior One or Virabhadrasana One. We're gonna move into Virabhadrasana Three, arms out to the side. We're gonna step in halfway with our left back foot and try to come into a balance. Lifting that back foot, that left foot into the air, balancing on the front right. Now if you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of strength, then you'll be able to create a really a flying type motion. Alright, and from here, come on to standing. Dropping that left foot down right next to your right. Walk it out a little bit. Right, we're going to do a tree pose. 
our right foot is again our rooted foot, our left foot is going to be our tree. This is low tree with the toes on the floor, heel up on the ankle. So my toes have not left the ground. If you want to, you could do a more intermediate wrapped around the calf. Or the most advanced here is foot in the inner thigh. So, you know, you got to work with where you are in your practice today. We'll take two more breaths, just, just challenging ourselves in this balancing posture. Nice work, everybody. We're going to step our left foot back, back as far as we can. So if you need to come to standing first, then you should. And then our left foot is going to step way back. Heel might be lifted this time. Right knee is still forward. Now we're moving into warrior two. Arms sweep out to the side. Back left heel comes down. So now the left foot is facing this long end of the mat. The toes are facing this way. The right toes are facing towards the short end of the mat. So if you're facing me, like this. Yes. Nice work, everybody. Let's deepen into our right knee a little bit further. Ooh, it starts to burn in there. Let's extend the arm, the left arm. So start to reach the left arm up, tilt over to the right. You're going to start to feel all of that extension through that left side body. Nice work, everybody. Bring yourself back up to warrior two. We're going to do a really fun cartwheel type pose transition. So as you cartwheel over, your right hand comes to the floor, left hand comes down to the floor, over your right foot. The left heel lifts up, and we'll step our foot back, downward dog. If you're needing a break, please, please, please take the time to take a couple breaths in child's pose, in puppy pose, or just right here in downward facing dog. We do have one more side to do. Reach your left leg up to the sky. Bend your knee so that you might feel that in your left quad on top of your thigh, right above your knee and that hip. Lengthen the leg up and try your best to sweep that leg forward, stepping your left foot towards the top of your mat, more forward than your right. Your right foot can be heel in the air or heel on the ground. You have to figure out what works best for you. Let's do our best to bring ourselves up to standing. Might get your balance off, it's okay. All right, we want our chest to be facing the short end of our mat. Right toes, left toes towards the short end of our mat, straight forward. Hands can be on the knee at your heart, out in the air, up to the sky. It's up to you. Where do you want your arms in this pose? What feels the best for your body today? Soften a little bit more into your left knee, your left thigh. It makes it more difficult. Here's our balance postures. Open your arms out to the side. We're going to be stepping up onto the left foot. Warrior three. Go ahead and step that right foot in next to your left. And we're coming into uh, a tree pose. Left foot is your root, it's your trunk. Right knee is your branch. So your toes can stay on the floor. Your toes can wrap around your calf. Come up into your inner thigh if you want to. Now if you choose the inner thigh, you don't want to push your hips out to the left because that's going to put a lot of strain on these ligaments. So try to keep everything in alignment, stacked over top your left foot. 
Great work, everybody. From here, we're going to step our right foot back towards the back of our mat for a big lunge, a big warrior pose. So I'll show you what that looks like here. And now we're going to warrior two. Arms open to the side. Your left toes are going to stay right where they are. The right toes are going to pivot towards the back right side of your mat. So I'll, I'll face the other way here. So we've got left knee bent, right toes towards that long end of the mat. Arms out straight, kind of like you're surfing on your yoga mat. Let's soften into our left knee a little bit further. Oh, it's starting to burn in there. And let's extend our warrior two. Bring your left elbow down to your left thigh and reach your right hand up or even over your head. A couple breaths. Nice work. Fan your way back up to center. We're going to windmill down. So that means left hand down, right hand down. Right heel lifts up and we slide our left foot back to downward facing dog. Thank goodness, a posture that we recognize and remember and that feels so normal for us. Let's release down to hands and knees. Untuck your toes and relax into a child's pose. If child's pose is not comfortable for you, Maybe, maybe a puppy pose with your hips more lifted and your chest melting. Or if it's just that your knees bother you in this position because it doesn't feel good to always kneel on the knees, then we can do this reverse. So let's all do that by pressing up to our hands, tabletop. Walk your knees to one side of the mat and drop the hips down. We'll come to seated on our mat and we're going to lay back on our mat. So I'm scooching forward just a little bit so that when I lay back I'm right in the center and you can instead of doing a forward child's pose you can pull your knees to your chest for a reverse child's pose. So this is just the reverse of what we would be doing with our knees, our shins on the ground on the mat. Massage your back into the floor. Start to bring your legs up, kind of like they're sitting in an invisible chair. And bring your arms straight out like they're teeing out to the side. Palms facing up to the ceiling, up to the sky. Let both legs drop over to the right. Try to keep your shoulders flat on the mat so that you're feeling that stretch in your mid back. You're welcome to stay there as long as you'd like. Make sure to switch sides. So if you're following my cues, bring your legs back up slowly over to the left as you glance over the right shoulder. Again, you're welcome to stay there for a couple more breaths. Or you're welcome to do that again on each side a couple times if it feels really good for you. Or of course, you're more than welcome to try any last postures that you'd like to add to your practice here. And when you've had enough movement, if that's the case for you, then you can come back to just a position of stillness where you can just lay with your legs out straight Maybe that's uncomfortable for your back, so having your knees slightly bent is more honorable for the back. 
So coming to a comfortable position, perhaps stacking your hands on top of your belly and your chest, like maybe one hand on your, on your heart and one hand on your belly. Or maybe it feels more natural to just have both hands resting right over your belly instead of your heart where we began. Let's just take about 10 deep breaths while, while we're just laying here, noticing the belly rising up into our hands with each inhale. The belly relaxing and falling beneath our hands as we exhale. the mind has begun to wander, then start to bring your awareness back to your intention, your sankalpa, the goal that you created when we first began our practice. Perhaps it was a prayer, maybe just a simple affirmation, one word, whatever that might be, just bring it back to your mind. Bring back the lacy, deep breaths that move through the nostrils, breathing in and filling the belly, breathing out, feeling the belly relax and soften. As we start to close our practice, we'll start to bring our feet flat with our knees bent, so slowly start adding movement, just walking your feet in a little closer to your body, and starting to rock your knees from side to side. We're going to add a laying hip stretch while we're here, so you just want to take your right foot and lift it up. Cross it over your left thigh so that you're creating a, a figure four with that right knee. It's kind of out to the side. And then start to rock the legs again from right to left. If you're a bit more advanced in your practice and you need a little bit more stretch, then you can pick up your left foot up off the ground and pull everything into your chest. So this is a reclined pigeon. The right leg is crossed over the left thigh, left foot is up off the ground, pulling the whole thing closer to my chest. We'll do it on the other side, so drop your left foot down, uncross the right foot, pick the left foot up, cross it over the right thigh. That might be enough for you, so you can stay right there and just let your legs rock from right to left. If you need a little bit bigger of a stretch, something a little bit more deep, then you can reach your hands to your right thigh 
and try to pick that foot up off the ground. Pull everything closer to your chest. Rocking the legs from right to left. Dropping your right foot down, uncrossing your left foot. Rock your knees from side to side. Once again, just bringing movement into your back. And start to maybe choose a side to roll onto. Or maybe you like to just come right up to seated when you are done rolling around on your back. So I'm going to roll onto my left side so that my right nostril is up to the ceiling.